Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. The President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, has presented new demands to be met in order for the European Union to transfer the funds allocated to Poland under the European Union's new seven-year budget and the coronavirus recovery package. The European Commission is already nearly two months behind on the deadline to transfer the money. Ursula von der Leyen's words came during a conference on the G20 summit when a question arose about the adoption of Poland's national recovery plan. We want to put into that recovery and resilience plan a clear commitment to dismantle the disciplinary chamber, to end or reform the disciplinary regime and to start a process to reinstall the judges. Yesterday, the Vice President of the European Court of Justice ordered Poland to pay a fine of 1 million euros a day to the European Commission for failing to suspend the disciplinary chamber of the Supreme Court. Today, in the Polish Parliament, leaders of the left-wing and opposition parties called for the suspension of the disciplinary chamber so that funds from the National Reconstruction Plan would be allocated to Poland. I think that the Polish government should pay from its own pocket because it is their fault that such things happen and not that the whole of Poland should be responsible for the actions of the government. Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki had earlier declared that the chamber would be liquidated by the end of the year. The right-wing Confederation Party is of the opinion that the European Union Court is acting outside of its mandate or ultra-virus. It violates the rule of law in the European Union. We demand that the organization to which we belong behaves under the rule of law. In the treaties, there is no prerogative, no competence for it to interfere in the system of justice. Prosecutor General Zbigniew Ziobro stressed today that Poland cannot pay a single zwoty in penalties, not for not closing the Turov mine, nor for not abolishing the disciplinary chamber. Portugal's parliament has thrown out the minority socialist government's 2022 budget bill, paving the way for snap elections and ending six years of relative political stability under Prime Minister Antonio Costa. A new election is expected to lead to a significant strengthening of Portugal's new National Conservative Party, Chega, which won only slightly more than 1% of the vote in 2019, but is now expected to win up to 10% this time. Costa's hard-left former allies sided with the Conservatives to defeat the bill that envisaged income tax cuts for the middle class and increased public investment to spur the post-pandemic recovery while cutting the deficit to 3.2% of gross domestic product from 4.3% in 2021. The Communists and left bloc said Costa had ignored their demands for more protections for workers, improvements in the social security system and more public investment in the health service as he was too focused on deficit costs. President Marcello Rubello de Souza warned on Monday that he would have no option but to dissolve Parliament and hold elections two years ahead of schedule. This decision, which doesn't allow us to continue with budget negotiations, is now with the President for him to evaluate it and take decisions he wants to take. The government respects the President's decisions and will follow them, whether to continue the government or go for snap elections if that's a decision. But analysts say an election alone will not solve the governability impasse, which could be exacerbated by the National Conservatives from the Cheka Party emerging as the third largest force in Parliament. Speaking at the Vox Party's recent Viva 21 festival in Madrid, Cheka Party leader Andrei Ventura made clear that his party will guarantee that southern European countries will be treated fairly by Brussels and Germany, while also protecting the Portuguese people and fellow Europeans from mass immigration to the continent. In Portugal, in Portugal, the government says that all immigrants that want to come now are welcome. All those refugees from Afghanistan and Pakistan, OK. Europe has to show solidarity and we do show solidarity. But how can we show solidarity to people who come to our countries without ever having set foot here? They come here. They are given money, houses, everything, while those who have worked all their lives for Spain and Portugal are given nothing. This is unacceptable. If and when the president publishes the dissolution decree, election must be held within 60 days. The Russian government has condemned Ukraine's first attack conducted with the help of its recently purchased Turkish Bayraktar TB2 drone. The airstrike took out a piece of separatist artillery in eastern Ukraine which had been shelling Ukrainian positions and claimed the life of one Ukrainian soldier. The Kremlin claims that Ukraine's use of the new drones risks destabilizing the region. 
The German Minister of Foreign Affairs has criticised the drone attack, stating that it goes against the Minsk agreement which bans foreign drones from operating near the front. The Ukrainians are outraged, pointing to the fact that the drones purchased from Turkey are Ukrainian, whilst also noting that Germany said nothing about the separatist artillery, which, according to the Minsk agreement, is also banned from the delineation area. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov stated that Turkey's decision to sell the drones to Ukraine was a mistake which could have grave consequences. We have really good ties with Turkey, but in this situation our fears are unfortunately being realized that the deliveries of these types of weapons to the Ukrainian military can potentially destabilize the situation on the line of contact. The General Staff of Ukraine's Armed Forces said it had deployed the drone to force pro-Russian separatists to cease fire. It said the drone had not crossed the line of contact between the two warring sides. Meanwhile, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov accused the Ukrainian government of being run by extremists. In general, the story must make all those who humor capricious requirements by Ukraine that it must join NATO tomorrow think, and certainly must make those who are arming the Kiev regime, which is under the control of neo-Nazis, think. Turkey, a NATO member, has criticized Moscow's annexation of Crimea and voiced support for Ukraine's territorial integrity. French National Conservative presidential candidate Marine Le Pen and Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban have met in Budapest to discuss the European Commission's growing power ambitions over member states in the Union. Both leaders agreed that Brussels is currently too focused on ideological matters and its drive for increased centralization. The Hungarian Prime Minister is running for re-election in the 2022 parliamentary elections, while Le Pen, the leader of the French Rassemblement National, is a candidate in France's presidential election also in 2022. Orban spoke at length about Brussels' ideological pressure at the joint news conference. The ideological pressure has reached levels never seen before. The promotion of migration and open society has reached a level never seen before. And instead of being the guardians of treaties, the European Commission has become an ideology centre. While stating that Hungary's interest is to remain a member of the strong European Union, Orban's government, with its main ally Poland, have clashed with Brussels over the scope of powers that the European Commission believes the European Union to have over member states. In October, the Polish Constitutional Tribunal ruled that parts of the European Union treaties were incompatible with its constitution, plunging Poland's relations with Brussels into crisis. Le Pen, who met Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki last week, vowed to hold a referendum on amending the French constitution so that it had primacy over EU law if she wins the presidential election. Les menaces de sanctions. Sanctions, threats and what's more, exclusion threats towards Hungary and Poland show what the stakes are. The European hegemony knows that it is gambling all in. Nations know that in this judiciary debate, their existence is at stake. Being aware of the importance of this, I promised, after being elected, to amend the French constitution with the help of a referendum to ensure its supremacy over EU laws. This democratic action will put an end to this debate and will provide a complete resolution to the immigration issue, a plague that our nations should protect themselves against. Cet acte démocratiquement incontestable mettra fin. In July, 16 European right wing parties, including Orbán's Fidesz, Le Pen's Rassemblement National, and Poland's ruling Law and Justice Party, signed a declaration against more integration and called for reform. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us in the weather, Poland Daily Business, and more programmes. But from mids, have a good night and a better tomorrow.